Hey guys, I hope you're doing well. Well, today I've got the last video on our study in Philippians. Um, I have no idea what we're going to do next because it's literally been about five minutes. I had a couple of bad takes on this video, so I haven't had really any time to think through what the next study is going to be, so I'll let you know when I figure it out, okay? That being said, let's just finish our study on Philippians and we'll move on from there. So today we're going to be looking at Philippians chapter 4, and I'm going to sneeze, maybe. Okay, nope, no sneeze. Philippians chapter 4. And I'm sorry guys, the camera is slowly tilting, so I apologize. Philippians chapter 4. Uh, and Philippians chapter 4, guys, is kind of a hodgepodge, especially the first half of it. There's a lot of little things going on, like one or two verses, and I didn't want to spend a lot of time going through one verse and two verse and one verse and three or whatever. So I kind of broke it up into two sections to kind of give you a big picture of what's going on. That's been the whole goal of this, to help you see the big picture so as you read through it, you understand what's going on. So Philippians chapter 4, first section is verses 1 through 9, second section is verses 10 through 23. In verses 1 through 9, um, first Paul starts with this call to unity. There's two ladies in the church that seem to be fighting, or at least not getting along the way they're supposed to, and Paul's trying to encourage them to be unified and to encourage the rest of the church to come around them. Um, again, throwing back to kind of chapter 2, the church needs to be unified. Then after that, he kind of gives them this encouragement to remain faithful to God, but also rejoice no matter what is going on, whether the circumstances are poor or pleasant, to always rejoice, but also to turn to God in prayer, should they, no matter the situation. Uh, the next section after that is an encouragement to meditate on what is good. Basically, this idea of meditating, guys, is not sitting there going, ah, um, um, or you know in some weird yogi position or whatever no the idea of meditating guys is to focus intensely on something and so Paul is calling the church to focus on what is good and he lists out some specific things but basically it's guys you need to set your minds on what is good what is godly and this goes back to the idea of sanctification which has been throughout this whole letter that if you're going to strive towards sanctification, becoming more like God, or becoming more like Christ, you need to meditate or focus your mind on what is good. Guys, what your mind is focused on, what is up here, comes out here, and through all this, okay? Basically, guys, whatever fills your mind, that's what's going to come out in your actions and your words. That's what's going to be the most prevalent thing in your life. So meditate, focus on what is good. The second part of this chapter, 10 through 23, um, he, he starts first with a, a commendation for the Philippians. He, he states, you know, he's content in any situation, but he's very thankful for the gift they gave and if they can continue to give towards his ministry. Um, Paul, guys, he, he did work for his living, but he only did that when he needed to. Usually he relied on the giving of churches, especially churches he had established a while ago, to help support his ministry of going to places and establishing new churches. He was a missionary. That's what he did. And so he says he's content in any situation that God will provide for him, but he is thankful for their gift and he commends their gift. He says, you know, you did a great job. I, I appreciate it. And any gift you give in the future, I am thankful for. You remember, one of the people that he is sending back was someone who had delivered this gift to him and then continued to stay with him as he worked in the ministry. So basically, he's just saying, I got your gift. I'm thankful for it, guys. I really appreciate you supporting my ministry. And then the final couple of verses are a conclusion, a blessing to the church there in Philippi, just saying, hey, God bless you. Take care, and I hope to see you again. And that's basically the end of Philippians, guys. So that's chapter 4 in a nutshell. I usually end these videos with two things. First, a point to take home to think about as you go throughout your day. And then a challenge to read part of, well, Philippians. So your challenge, of course, is going to be to read chapter 4. But the point I want you to take home, guys, comes from the, the first part of it. Where it's talking about meditating on what is good. 
Guys, sanctification is something we probably don't talk about enough in the church, that we need to strive towards Christ-likeness. Not that we are saved by good works, but we do need to be pursuing good works and pursuing Christ-likeness. That being said, guys, a good place to start or another thing to work on as you are pursuing Christ's likeness, trying to become more like Christ or build your relationship with him, is meditating on what is good, focusing on what is good, and filling your head with it so that all that comes out, whether you're angry, you're tired, you're sad, whatever the situation, whatever comes out is what is good, what is godly, what is in the Bible. My Bible's over there. That's why I'm pointing at it. So meditate on what is good. Thanks guys for uh, watching this video. I hope you're doing well. Sorry about the camera, it continues to slowly lean. There, I think I'm kind of more upright now. <laughs> anyway, take care guys, I miss you. I love you guys. I'll let you know what the next series is. But until then, take care, bye.